Hello everyone, we're here with Mr. Anku Jain, who is the Managing Director of MediaTek India. He heads MediaTek's Pan India operations and he has experience spanning 25 years. So hi Anku, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you so much for answering our questions in advance. My it's pleasure. a great pleasure to talk to you. So as was shown at MWC recently, I actually went there uh, to the MediaTek booth. So MediaTek has been putting in some serious R&D into developing two-way satellite connection in smartphones. So how do you think this will change the roadmap of smartphone communication or communication in general in the future? Yeah, I think uh, you have started with uh, one of the most exciting topics, uh, you know, about uh, satellite communication. And as you rightly put it, uh, this was, uh, you know, announced in the MWC 2023. Uh, and uh, it was one of the most uh, prominent launches that we show, showcased uh, in this event. And uh, our chipset, you know, it's called MT6825. Uh, uh, it is MediaTek's uh, two-way satellite communications chipset uh, based on 3GPP uh, non-terrestrial network. And uh, what this does is it, uh, it fills the gap in mobile coverage. Uh, you know, provides uh, reliable connectivity in remote locations. Because, uh, you know, as I think uh, we uh, in India itself, 5G got launched uh, last October. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, the coverage will take time and still once, even once the coverage is finished, we will still have some remote locations which will not have coverage. And uh, similarly, in the rest of the world, we always have uh, locations like, you know, you know, middle of the ocean or maybe remote uh, mountains and so on. And where uh, I think our lifestyle has become such that we always need to be connected. And this satellite communications uh, chipset will actually help in uh, that uh, that direction uh, because that will help, it will help uh, users to be always connected. And uh, I think the biggest application uh, would be in smartphones uh, for sure, uh, but also in uh, uh, maybe IoT applications, right? So it's not only for smartphones. Right. And uh, MediaTek would target both the IoT NTN and also the new radio NTN technology based on 3GPP release 17. So it right. is uh, really a very, very exciting and a huge step for MediaTek and we are really looking forward to it. And we'll see how the, uh, you know, the absorption happens uh, going forward. Right. Uh, so as I understand, this is two-way satellite connection and just not just one way. So what are some of the advantages of having two-way instead of one way? So two-way actually, you know, it gives uh, major benefits like, uh, you know, not only for, again, smartphones is given, right? I mean, we can talk, we can, uh, you know, have a video call and so on. Right. Uh, but also uh, it has benefits for uh, things like agriculture, uh, logistics, uh, forestry, automotive, uh, because, uh, you know, as I said earlier, uh, the, the, the there are two aspects to this. One is the uh, new radio uh, NTN and, uh, and one is IoT NTN. Okay. So for IoT, that will be really uh, something which will help in, uh, you know, uh, text transfer, which has maybe low data requirements, uh, but uh, the new radio will be able to support video call, etc. And uh, so this is, uh, you know, evolving and uh, I think uh, more and more use cases are coming up and uh, definitely we will uh, be, you know, going forward with uh, some announcements going forward. Great, great. Okay, so in your opinion, has the global chip shortage ended? And what are your thoughts on the post-pandemic recovery of smartphone chip manufacturers like yourself? And also, how do you ensure that sh uh, chip shortage just doesn't dampen user confidence? Yeah, I think uh, this has been a hot topic for the last uh, two years. At it least, has. Right? <laughs> and uh, we have been asked this question uh, time and again. And uh, fortunately, uh, if I go in the past, uh, uh, you know, we have been able to manage this situation quite well okay. because we have had a very good relationship with our, uh, you know, foundry partners and also we were able to uh, kind of uh, have a good balance of supply and demand uh, with our customers. So we were able to kind of, uh, you know, uh, work, uh, go along very, very, with, uh, very well with our customers and ensure that uh, their requirements were met. Uh, in fact, uh, in the last three years, our, our revenue has actually uh, become quite, uh, you know, it has actually increased a lot uh, in spite of the chip, chip shortage. Uh, but going forward, I think this is something which is behind us. Uh, the chip shortage actually is uh, something which is um, more or less solved now. Uh, I think we don't uh, see that um, the, what the issues, the challenges we saw in the last two years uh, will remain uh, going forward. Great. And uh, speaking about challenges, what are some of the main challenges of the consumer industry, uh, semiconductor industry, and how is MediaTek addressing these? Yeah, first of all, you know, semiconductor industry has become the backbone of whatever we are doing around us, right? So uh, the equipment that we use at home, like, you know, the routers, the TV, the smartphones, that, you know, the, the Chromebooks, 
Uh, there's so many different types of devices we use and all that uses semiconductor. So it's a very, very exciting, uh, uh, you know, industry. And uh, and all these uh, devices which I mentioned are uh, all, you know, powered by MediaTek. So it is uh, something which is uh, uh, really very, very, uh, uh, you know, kind of cutting edge uh, technology for for, uh, for our digitalization which has happened in the past few years. Right, and going forward, it's going to increase further. Uh, but definitely there are some challenges. Uh, I think semicon uh, industry has challenges like, uh, you know, uh, if we, if we uh, leave on the chip shortage issue, which is past us, uh, but there are always uh, macro uh, cycles uh, which happen. So right now, if you see uh, as a macro, uh, uh, you know, uh, situation uh, globally, uh, there is some, uh, you know, uh, there's some, uh, you know, moderation of uh, businesses everywhere, right? So that is one challenge which uh, semicon industry is facing and, uh, uh, and they are part of that industry. Uh, but, uh, you know, if we look at uh, maybe a longer term view, I think the challenges uh, involve things like skill shortage, right? Uh, because as, as and when we see more and more, uh, uh, you know, penetration of, uh, you know, semiconductor, I think we, everyone is going to kind of use semiconductor in some way. So, uh, so there will be a kind of explosion of uh, uh, requirements of, uh, you know, the company you know, or whatever chipsets we're making, etc. And also the skills that are required to support that, right? So, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the other challenge is that uh, this industry has a very short life cycle. So if you mm-hmm. see uh, the devices that we have, right, at, at home or at, in our hands, the replacement cycle is quite uh, quite fast. And also the innovations uh, are required, because I said it's cutting edge. So uh, even though we are talking about 5G right now, we are already uh, working on 6G, you know, which is going to happen a few years from now. So the, the, the there's always, we are always on, on our toes to make sure the innovation is we are up to speed on the innovation and so that's also a challenge you know because uh, we have to keep investing in the uh, in the in the in the in our innovations and it's a very very r and d intensive and investment intensive industry so these are some of the challenges i think they're happy challenges i think there's no i won't complain uh, it really keeps us on our toes and we uh, always want to do the next step you know take the next step right Okay, great. Um, so one of the challenges actually in all battery powered devices like our smartphones is that efficiency gains are always done at semiconductor level and never so much in the terms of battery itself, right? So why is it so difficult to innovate for battery tech? What do you think? So, you know, the battery itself is, uh, you know, we have heard uh, issues like battery uh, powered devices getting some you know issues and, you know, right. uh, sometimes even... Uh, uh, you know, they have been uh, hitting issues and so on. So that is uh, definitely not to, n- nothing much to do with semiconductor. It, that's a, 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 something to do with maybe the battery quality or, or, or the way it is, uh, maybe the, the equipment being used to charge the battery is not good enough. Uh, but from the semiconductor point of view, uh, we also play a big role. Uh, like, you know, we have, uh, uh, you know, artificial intelligence that we use to ensure that uh, batteries are charged properly and it's used in a very efficient manner. Uh, so that we are able to control the thermal aspects uh, and the and the charging aspects of the battery. So that is uh, what we are doing. But also, uh, uh, you know, chipset is uh, uh, the other thing we have is like if I look talk, talk about our latest chipset for smartphones, which is the Dimensity 9200 Plus, uh, that is using four nanometer process, right, uh, for manufacturing the chip. So that has its inherent uh, power efficiency uh, uh, achievements. So that uh, is a is a you know from a semiconductor point of view or the chipset point of view. Uh, we ensure that uh, we are using the state-of-the-art uh, nodes for our flagship products so that the battery life is enhanced, right? And also, uh, it also is able to control the uh, the usage of uh, power. So, so I think so- these chipsets are not only very, very uh, computing, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, very high computing power, but also very, very uh, efficient in terms of performance, uh, uh, battery power performance. Great. So speaking of that, actually, smartphone safety is quite a concern, you know, because increasing charging wattages, we've got as far as 240 watt now. And, you know, there are some reports of devices even blowing up, right? So how does MediaTek ta- uh, tackle this at the chipset level? And how does it ensure that it doesn't generationally increase these issues and it should decrease over time, right? Yeah, I think uh, this is something I, I, you know, I kind of uh, answered partly in my previous question. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And uh, it is, uh, you know, MediaTek is always designing chipsets which are industry-leading energy-efficient chipsets. I think that's right. really uh, our role in this whole whole thing, right? And uh, we ensure that we are using uh, a good, uh, you know, energy-efficient chipsets, and we are using AI, uh, uh, you know, AI power to ensure uh, 
a good balance of uh, you know usage uh, of the of the you know whenever you and user is using the, using it but uh, apart from that uh, also we are using you know uh, you know a battery tech is all about say you know energy saving also right as i mentioned right. so these are the various aspects we're working on and uh, i think it's going quite, quite well for us okay uh, you actually spoke about your latest launch the dimensity 9 uh, 9200 plus soc for nanometer process as you said can you tell us more about the architecture of this chip and how it will push performance further in the smart smartphone market so you know this uh, yeah nanometer plus is our greatest and the you know latest uh, chipset that we launched uh, and uh, and it's going to power very awesome phones very soon yeah. and uh, so it has uh, you know multiple aspects right uh, one of first of all it is built on 4 nanometer uh, process that itself brings a lot of uh, you know efficiency and a lot of computing power in the hands of the user and apart from that it has uh, you know uh, uh, great multimedia qualities great camera uh, 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 support and uh, so so i think the end user experience will be really awesome can you tell us about some of the uh, gains in performance in terms of stats if you have those numbers on hand right now anything like even a small uh, from the previous gen to this gen Uh, so uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. So I think we can. Uh, I, what can I, what can I talk, uh, what I can talk about is uh, you know it has things like uh, MediaTek Magic 790. Okay. So that helps in the display. Uh, you know, awesome displays uh, for okay. the end user. It has the Hyper Engine 6.0 uh, technology for gaming. Okay. So you know, uh, all these phones are really multi-purpose right now so, uh, these days, right? So it it is catering to the business users and also to the gamers and so on. So Hyper Engine 6.0 helps in the gaming uh, aspect of it. and uh, it has the apu the latest apu uh, chipset uh, part of it and so on so i think there are multiple uh, uh, you know parameters which are making it uh, really a very very great chipset great uh, so my next question is actually about edge ai what are the advantages of edge ai and how will it impact the mobile computing industry in a positive manner can you el- elaborate on that yeah so for edge ai you know uh, so ai can happen on the cloud Or right. it can happen in the AI on the edge. On the edge. So the, these are the two ways uh, AI can happen. So the way you know edge AI, uh, AI what it what does is that it uh, it kind of uh, removes the need for always connectivity to be there, right? And a lot of computing happens on the edge, which is on the device itself, and uh, that has all, you know many many uh, inherent advantages. Uh, for example, uh, it has you know if uh, if there is no connection or no connectivity required, then uh it is able to uh, has has more security aspect right because uh, it, it doesn't need to communicate and uh, everything have, is happening on the edge so it has a lot of uh, security aspects and it has uh, uh, it it has better uh, i can say uh, be- better response time right uh, because uh, you know th- there's no uh, lag uh, and you know there's no need for the communication to happen with the server or with the, with the cloud right uh, so these are some of the things uh, which can happen and uh, our chipsets are able to uh support uh, uh this edge ai uh, aspect and it really helps in uh, uh you know uh, real time immediacy uh, i can call it right uh, so you know if uh, if uh, it reduces the latency uh, because of uh, no requirement uh, to communicate with the cloud and uh, it can you know i think use case i would say it will have things like uh, real time analytics can be supported right high high performance computing at the edge uh, uh, really helps in that in that uh, aspect and uh, as i mentioned earlier data privacy and low power consumption etc will also happen with this great okay uh, so of course you spoke about 5g it's becoming more and more prevalent in the indian market how does mediatek plan to differentiate itself in this market and can you elaborate on mediatek's 5g and maybe even 6g roadmap okay so one thing you know uh, our mediatek motto has always always been democratizing uh, power uh, computing power in the hands of the user right Right. So one thing we have made sure is that uh, we are able to cater to the entire uh, segment of uh, users you know from the mainstream to the premium to the flagship so we have a, you know plethora of let's say a gamut of uh, chipsets uh, 5g chipsets which are we call dimensity series of chipsets uh, which is uh, you know starting from dimensity 700 then 900 1000 and up to 8100 and i think we launched 7200 uh, recently so Correct. and also we talked about 9200 right so so it is a you know huge range of chipsets that we have and that got, what that does is that it it gives a lot of choices to our uh, our customers uh, oem partners who can actually use the chipset that that, that uh, you know satisfies their uh, customer needs right i mean uh, you know, uh, so that is 
So that is one thing which uh, we will continue. I think you'll see more and more uh, launches going forward. And uh, secondly, uh, you know, uh, I already talked about uh, uh, phone nanometer process for the for the latest chipset that we have. That brings it its own advantages in computing power and battery efficiency. And uh, so this is uh, our, uh, you know, I think we will continue in this direction. I think 5G is has a long way to go in India. Uh, we started just in October, although the devices got launched much earlier. Uh, but uh, I think uh, this uh, uh, the next uh, few years, we are going to see more and more of this 4G to 5G transition. I think we will see uh, more and more 4G users getting converted to 5G users. And that's why we are very, very excited about uh, this 5G technology. And uh, uh, and I think uh, still, uh, I think by the end of this year, the, the whole country will be, I think, covered by 5G, right? I think Reliance uh, announced that during the October uh, speech. And uh, also by early next year, it'll be ATL will be also done with that. So so I think the whole, uh, uh, you know, the whole country will actually be able to Take advantage of this uh, this technology, and so that this is about smartphone. But also we have 5G would also help in uh, Industry 4.0, for example, right? Uh, you know, because it provides connectivity, right? So if uh, you have a industry setting where uh, some sensors are uh, sensors are there, and they need to communicate to uh, to a you know intelligent server, you know, which needs to decide, may take some action, maybe preventive action, or maybe uh, it has to uh, do some uh, you know uh, checking some parameters and so on. So that also will have 5G component, right? So, so that so industry 4.0 etc. will also have a lot of uh, use cases for 5G, and specifically for India, I think uh, you know fixed wireless access will have a great use case. So if you see our rural areas uh, in the country, uh, they uh, many of them don't have. I mean, a lot of them don't have broadband connectivity because the fiber was not laid so far, right? So the 5G will then be able to provide that connectivity and and let the all the users be able to enjoy the broadband speeds even though they are in rural settings so there are i think a lot of uh, use cases so very very exciting about that great all right um so does mediatek plan on sourcing chips in india locally in the future and do you have any comment about the country's pli scheme for semiconductor manufacturing and how you could better work with the industry partners in this direction yeah, I think uh, this is uh, again. This has been a very hot topic last one year, uh, and I think the government has done a fabulous job in uh, creating this ecosystem because it's. Right. Uh, I think a lot of uh, it's not only about fab, uh, you know, foundry, foundry itself. I think that's the uh, the huge step which is going to happen, right? Apart from that, you know, in the last four five years, a lot of groundwork has been put in. You know, we had PLI scheme for smartphone manufacturing for and other components and other electronic products. So that has slowly and steadily created that ecosystem. Uh, which is uh, necessary for the whole uh, industry to, uh, you know, uh, I can say, to flourish, right? So, so that is, uh, and of course, uh, the the PLI scheme for the fab manufacturing is the kind of the last step, right? Which is uh, we are really uh, waiting with a bated breath, right? When that happens, uh, so uh, but it is looking very, very exciting and very, very uh, feasible that it is going to happen. I think. Uh, the, we, our country re really had some false starts in the, maybe a few years ago, uh, but this time it's looking uh, really, uh, 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 you know, it's looking very serious intent and things are going to work out, uh, uh, definitely. Okay. And uh, I think your other question about uh, what is MediaTek take on it, uh, you know, how do we, uh, so, so indirectly we benefit a lot, you know, as in when this semiconductor ecosystem builds up, uh, uh, the you know, it's a great advantage for MediaTek. Although MediaTek is a fabulous company, so we do not manufacture chipsets on our own. Right. And yes. we do, uh, you know, leverage our partners, foundry partners to make it for us. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, whenever this happens in India, I think it'll be a great thing for us to look at. And uh, it, we'll see if that uh, is able to satisfy our needs, which I'm sure it will. Right. And especially for the mature nodes, uh, that's where uh, I think the manufacturing will start in India first. And uh, we will look at that time, uh, how that uh, kind of gels well with our requirements. All right. Thank you so much for answering that. Uh, MediaTek also recently announced uh, Dimensity Auto for its new automo uh, automotive platform. Can you please tell our viewers about this as well? Yeah, so that was uh, one uh, great announcement we made recently. And yes. uh, so this, you know, MediaTek is actually committed to investing in innovative automotive technologies as, as well, uh, right? And so this is going to, uh, and one thing as well about automotive is it has to meet automotive grade reliability standards. Because we have to, you know, let's say you're driving a car and uh, and so it has to be like 100% reliable, right? We cannot have any yeah. uh, 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 two ways about that. 
So, so MediaTek portfolio uh, for this automotive will consist of uh, Dimensity uh, Auto Cockpit, uh, Dimensity Auto Connect, uh, Dimensity Auto Drive, and also Dimensity Auto Components. So maybe I'll talk about these uh, briefly. And uh, so uh, talking about Dimensity Auto Cockpit and infotainment system features, it is going to rely on MediaTek's high performance AI multiprocessors and also, you know, MediaTek's Mira Vision, you know, whatever multimedia uh, 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 capabilities that, that MediaTek has, a uh, lot of those will be kind of leveraged in the, this as well, right? For Dimensity Auto Cockpit and uh, infotainment uh, features. So things like Mira Vision, HDR cameras, dedicated DSP for microphone, audio processing. So all these aspects will be uh, great, uh, uh, you know, technologies which we already have and which we can use the leverage for this aspect. Then for Dimensity Auto Connect, uh, that'll be the, to the NTN satellite communication, which we mentioned earlier. So that will enable always connected vehicle and combine. it will combine high-speed telematics uh, in the car and top performance Wi-Fi networking as well. And it will support uh, high interoperability uh, and co coexistence of multiple wireless network standards. So, so that's about uh, Dimensity Auto Connect, uh, uh, right? And finally about uh, Dimensity Auto Drive and Dimensity Auto Components. It'll have, uh, it'll enable so features like ADAS, right? I think we have heard a lot about ADAS recently in India as well, right? So it'll enable ADAS solutions and provide a scalable and comprehensive open platform uh, to provide partners with intelligent uh, assist and autonomous uh, driving uh, solutions. So, so it's going to be, you know, really uh, uh, something which uh, is going to power the next few years, right? And right. I think, I think the industry is just starting out, uh, uh, you know, overall globally, right? And uh, there are a lot of innovations which are going to, uh, we will see in the cars. And that's what, uh, that's the reason that MediaTek had announced uh, these uh, uh, auto, you know, MediaTek auto uh, technologies. Great, sounds very exciting. I, I have one last question. I think you've answered all of the questions I had prepared, but I do have one last question. Uh, in the last year, you can take 2022 as well. What has been one technology that has wowed you completely? You've just looked at it and you, you don't believe that it's in front of your eyes. Anything, it can be anything. Hmm, that's a tough question. <laughs> that, uh, you know, from MediaTek point of view, I think I would say the 5G itself is a very awesome technology, which uh, I can keep talking about it. But you know, we uh, I touched about some topics earlier. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, this is going to revolutionize the way we work. Right. And if if you look at the Indian ecosystem, uh, you know we have uh, like hundred unicorns in the startup ecosystem, and they have so far relied on 4G. So this 5G will unleash a new wave of uh, innovations, right? And uh, I think uh, that's uh, where we will see in the next few years, we will see startups which are going to create use cases, which we don't, we're not aware of right now, right? But they will create use cases which are going to leverage 5G and they cannot really work well on 4G, right? So we always discuss about, uh, you know, what's uh, going to be a great killer application 5G. But that's one aspect which will happen. You know, startups will actually innovate. You know, we have so many uh, budding startups, so that'll happen. So I would say 5G itself uh, is, uh, is something we were waiting for so long, but I think finally it happened last year in yes. India. And uh, that is uh, absolutely awesome. Great. All right. With that, I think we're at the end of this interview. Thank you so much, Mr. Anku, for your time. And we hope to see you again next time, maybe next year with another interview. All right. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you.